Welcome to another episode of Better Greener Choices. I'm Christian Wagley. Today we're visiting a wonderful little oasis. It's a plant nursery in Gulf Breeze called the Garden Gate. It's been described to us as a place where butterflies flutter by on the wind and the grounds are full of plants that are perfectly suited to our Gulf Coast climate. I also hear that the owner, Emily Peterson, is inside working in the garden this morning. So we're going to go inside and meet Emily and find out more about what makes the Garden Gate such a special place. Hey, Emily, good morning. Hey, Christian, welcome. Thank you. What is happening in the garden this morning? There are some wonderful things going on in the garden this morning. Look at this beautiful boy, or girl. This is an Eastern Black Swallowtail caterpillar. Just uh, getting wow. close to making this chrysalis. Isn't he beautiful? He's beautiful. But there are lots of insects and birds and all kinds of things happening around here today. Isn't it pretty? Yeah. Well, tell us more about the Garden Gate and what you do here. Well, the Garden Gate um, started out as a, as a native nursery. We wanted to show people in the area how wonderful the native plants of the area are. And that was our specialty and our, our, our place in the scheme of things. And even before we opened, we planted a butterfly garden. And so we got so fascinated with butterflies and our customers became so fascinated with butterflies that butterfly gardening has actually become the largest part of our, our business. So we still do quite a bit of, of uh, work with butterflies. We've added a great selection of edible plants. We have a great selection of herbs, fruit trees, and um, seasonal vegetables and the seeds to grow them. So we do all of those kinds of things. We're, we really are focused on local gardening. So everybody that works here has gardened here for a long time. Everybody that works here can tell you whether or not the plant you're thinking of will probably be successful in the spot that you're thinking of. So we have that kind of expertise, a lot of information. And because the gardeners that shop with us are so generous, they share their experience and we can pass that on. So it's just been, it's a wonderful place to be. Um, to learn about plants and their relationships with people and insects and birds and everything. And we just have so much fun here all the time. Well, I can't wait to see it. Do you have time to show us around this morning? I'd love to show you around this morning. Emily, what's, what is it that's so special and unique about the Garden Gate? I think it's the local experience that we have. Everybody that works here has gardened here for years, um, and they love gardening here. So they know the plants that work for us, and they, <laughs> they um, love the plants that attract the wildlife, and they love the native plants. So that's what we offer here, is we offer very precise local information about what grows here and how to get it to be successful. What do you love so much about the native plants? Our native plants are beautiful. You know, we have completely unique growing conditions here and we have completely unique native plants. I'd love them for their ease of maintenance but I'd love them because they're beautiful. This little guy um, is a native blueberry. We have a lot of blueberries that in that members of that genus that are native in the southeast. Some are small trees, some are the edible blueberries that we, we eat. This guy is evergreen. Most of the blueberries are not. This guy is evergreen. And there's something going on with this plant all year long. The blueberries are tiny. Um, you know, there's, they're, they're almost too much trouble for people to eat. But it's a great plant to attract birds and other wildlife. And because it's evergreen, it's always pretty in your in your garden. It's always pretty in your garden. Plant. What else do you have here? In in shrubs, I brought some of my favorites to show you. This is um, this is the Florida anise or Florida anise, um, and it is doing an unusual thing. It's showing its bloom right now. The bloom is a little star shaped. This one's pretty much spent, but a little star shaped burgundy bloom. Uh, the flower's not real fragrant, but the foliage of this plant is is wonderfully fragrant. A good aftershave. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. And it's a great plant for a shady area. It's, it makes a great screening shrub. Gets quite large. Um, 
a little bit slow growing, but just a wonderful um, plant for a shady area. We have a friend here that's checking out yeah. uh, these flowers. Who, what's going on there? <laughs> these are some of our native ground covers and our perennials. And this guy is on our native skull cap. This is a perennial that you would grow in a very shady site. Um, and it blooms um, late summer through fall. And you can see the bees are really, really attracted to it. Um, it's one of our great nectar plants and just lights up a shady area. This little guy is a Georgia savory. And I have to say that's one of my little favorites too. It's, um, it's at the end of its fall bloom period. It blooms this way in spring and fall. And it's a slow growing evergreen shrub and it has wonderful fragrance um, to the foliage. And again, you'll get bees and butterflies mm. and hummingbirds on it. Isn't this a pretty plant? And this guy is, uh, this is one of our best. This is, um, this is Stokes Aster or Stokesia. And this is one that you will see in catalogs all over the world because of its adaptability. It's got a wonderful, large, blue, aster-type, daisy-type bloom in the late spring. So it's bloomed for the year. But this plant will grow in wet, it'll grow in dry, it'll grow in sun, it'll grow in shade. It's one of our natives that just adapts. It's a great plant for butterflies, uh, cut flowers, easy to propagate and divide. It's, it's just one of those do-everything plants. We would call it an anchor plant because we could put this in a landscape in both the sun and the shade and the continuity of that one plant would pull a landscape together. So that's a, that's a very useful native plant. Very nice. Very good. And the cedar in the background, that's one of our great native texture plants. Great for wildlife. And that one's pretty fast growing too. So lots of, lots of, lots of interesting natives. Yeah, there's no shortage of choices. I mean, there's hundreds of different natives here in our area. And as you said, the advantages being that they just are so well suited here. They, the really the amount of care you have to give them is so minimal, right? It is. It's very minimal. Once you have them established, they really don't require anything. You know, and if, if you can um, talk to someone that has the information about their ideal growing conditions um, and, and select a native plant that, that fits what you already have instead of trying to make your conditions match the plant, make the plant match your conditions, you have really, really reduced the maintenance involved in your yard. Um, so that's one of the great things about them, but the fact that they support all of the wildlife that is in our area. I don't always think that people have a sense of how important that is to our ecology to have all those layers of relationships. If we didn't have um, pesky aphids, we wouldn't get ladybugs to come in and eat them. And if we didn't have sparrows that came down and ate the ladybugs, then we'd only have ladybugs. And all of those all of those relationships in your ecosystem play a part, and it's it's um, it's so much fun to watch. It's so much fun to watch. It's so beautiful to watch. So there's so many reasons to do natives. Well, here we are in the edible section with all of our beautiful herbs and the vegetables for this time of year. This guy is the um, giant red mustard. This plant gets to be huge. And I offer you a taste of it, but it's very spicy and hot. So it's a lot of times it's mixed with other greens because it's such, got such a, a nice heat to it. It's such a beautiful plant and it can get really, it can get about two feet tall and, and two or three feet wide. So it's beautiful in a container in the winter garden. But it's um, yeah, it's beautiful color because you've yeah. got so many other things are green. There's romaine lettuce yeah. and kale that are more green. And that's, I mean, that's just, that's intense. It is beautiful intense. Beautiful color there. It is intense. And with the Swiss chard, that's another very colorful plant, oh, edible yeah. plant for um, cool weather. And the great stems, and the stems can be either yellow or gold or orange or green, and the stems are actually edible when they get to be large. You can use them like celery and stuff them. 
<laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, one customer that deep fries them, that has to be good, you know. A southern thing. A southern thing. But they're, you know, the, the smaller leaves are great just raw, and then the, the larger leaves are spinach-like. Um, they can be sautéed or cooked with other greens. So. Beautiful. Easy another one that's to, easy to grow. Another one that's both colorful and edible. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have a lot of different kinds of basil. And I wanted to show you this one um, in particular. We sell um, this plant, this one of the plants that we sell more than almost any other one. And we don't sell it to eat, even though it's a basil, we sell it as a bee plant. This is one of the very best plants to attract bees to your vegetable garden. So if you're having trouble getting pollination on some of your vegetables, planting this plant around it um, will really bring in the bees. So it's great. This is African basil. Can I get a sample? You sure can. You sure can. And I think we've scared all the bees off, mm -hmm. but boy, they're all over it over here. So they're um, they're wonderful. But, but so with the basil, a lot of times we we keep cutting our basil back to make it be bushy and encourage that growth. But in this one, it's good to go ahead and let it flower. Right. Huh? Let it flower. This is this is the exception to the rule. Um, and it's really a lot hardier than most basils too, but it will have to be protected in the winter. If we get another really cold winter, for sure. So we have a lot of um, plants that either attract insects or repel insects, like this lemongrass behind me. That's used to um, repel mosquitoes, as is the lemon uh, geranium. So you could just mm -hmm. kind of rub it on your skin or mm -hmm. too, but yeah. in the garden it yeah. tends to repel mosquitoes. It does. Right? As long as the scent is released, if you touch it or water it and the scent is released, then you'll get that repellent quality of it. Yeah. Well, we've only touched on just a few here, and as I look around, I mean, I see a couple dozen more that we don't even have time for today, but uh, so many other different textures and smells and tastes and flowers and all kinds of incredible herbs. They're wonderful. Uh, they're wonderful. They're a great addition to any landscape, and they're great in containers, too, so they're nice to, um, to grow small amounts and containers. One of the things that we do at Christmas, we don't usually sell poinsettias, but we put red and green lettuces in a terracotta pot, and so you've got something very seasonally colored that's a great gift because they can people can eat those loose leaf lettuces until May. So you've got a gift that keeps right on giving all through all through Christmas and then well into the new year. So lots of fun things you can do with them. Well thank you, Emily. Lots of good information yeah. to take home for our for our herb garden. Yes, great stuff, great stuff. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. What are the real keys to having a successful garden? The first and the most important is to have good soil. Most people don't realize that soil contains as much life as the life that's above it. And that all of the life that's in your soil is helping your plants to take up the nutrients they need and to grow um, in a healthy fashion. So once you take care of the soil that you have, and it doesn't matter where you are, all, all soil needs help. Uh, all soil benefits from organic material. Once you take care of your soil, then your plants are able to thrive without a lot of extra um, additive fertilizers and other products. One of the things I think gardeners forget is that plants take up nutrients through their root system. And the components in the soil that help plants do that make them healthy. You can spray fertilizers on the leaves, but it doesn't take it back to the roots. So in order to fertilize the whole plants, your nutrients have to come in your soil. The consistency of your soil is what holds water, and water is what transmits that nutrients into the plant. And so the, the consistency of, of the soil, the bulk of the soil, is the most important key to success in gardening. If your plants are happy where they are, if your soil is in good shape, and if you're watering as you should be, plants have their own immune systems and they generally don't have pests or diseases unless something in their environment is out of whack. So basically, plants that are healthy don't need anything to stay healthy, they just are healthy. And that way our job come, becomes to be observant and to see the health of our plants. The, the side benefit of that is we get to see all the life that's going on on our plants. 
and not to intervene unless there's some um, major necessity to do that and let the balance of nature take care of itself. And that's one of the reasons we invite in bees <laughs> and butterflies is that they help us um, with that balance. So around here, we never spray pesticides. Uh, if we have one plant that has a pest on it, we'll sometimes use a little soapy water. But right now, because we don't spray pesticides, we have lizards and uh, predatory insects that take care of all of our pest problems. And even though some of our leaves are eaten, you know, we, we feel like that's kind of an honor that we get to have that much life in our garden and that our garden takes care of itself. So those are the keys. Well, Emily, it truly is an oasis of life here at the Garden Gate. I mean, there are butterflies flying every which way, bees pollinating, uh, flowers everywhere, lots of things to taste and smell. You've really been great for hosting us here, so thank you so much. Well, thank you guys for coming. You know, this is what we love here. We have a passion for this kind of gardening, and we love to share it. We're so glad you came. Well, we loved it. We're going to come back again soon. Good, 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 good. Well, the Garden Gate is truly a place that helps us make better, greener choices. I'm Christian Wagley, and until next time, live well and live green. Mm -hmm.